Hey Calgary and welcome to our first ever online experience. This is exciting for us. Um, we never know who we might be able to reach or uh, whose living room we may end up in with this. So we encourage you to share this uh, with your friends, with your family. Um, in these times of uncertainty, we certainly do need God. And so uh, we just ask that you would uh, experience this, uh, this, this service the same way you would on a Sunday. We're going to worship together. We're going to hear a great message from Pastor Tom. And I will see you at the end once again. See you soon. i 
and you unravel me with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears have gone I'm no longer a slave to fear I am a child of God I'm no longer
thank you so much for worshiping with us. Uh, we're so excited for what God is going to do through this virtual church meeting uh, together here this Sunday morning. Um, we have some small group experiences planned for you guys coming up here very shortly. So make sure you do pay attention to our Facebook and our Instagram pages. Um, we'll be kind of putting out uh, info on how you can uh, be a part of that, how you can help uh, serve in that in that capacity um, pretty soon. And uh, we're excited about what God could do through that, through our time spent together, even though it's virtual. Just because we're socially distant doesn't mean we need to be relationally distant. And so we're going to find ways that we can still be Calvary Church together. So again, uh, check out our Facebook, check out our Instagram, stay in tune for that if you want to be a part of our small group. Um, also, uh, we're going to show you a giving video and, uh, and that'll kind of, uh, normalize our Sunday mornings. Uh, it's going to have to be online. Um, but, uh, but we just encourage you to try it. Um, it's a super easy experience. I've been doing it for months and, uh, and we absolutely love it. So, um, here's the video and, uh, next up is Pastor Tom. We've set up a simple way for you to give to our church online. If you want to give a quick gift, enter an amount, select a fund, then enter your email address and your first and last name. Then enter your payment details and click Give. And that's it! We'll send a receipt to your email address. To use a saved payment method or manage a recurring donation, you'll want to log in. Click the Login button and we'll send a code to your phone or email account. Verify the code and you're in. Now your payment info is ready to go when you want to make a donation. To manage your giving details, switch over to the My Giving page. Here you'll see more ways you can give. You can also add a payment method, like a bank account or a debit card, set up a recurring donation, and view your giving history. Well, it's so good to be with you online for our very first time. Isn't it amazing the day that we live in that although we can't be uh, together in person, we can't connect in person, but we can connect online and we can worship together. We can connect around God's word. I'm thankful that we have this opportunity to be together today. I wanted to start off by saying that Philippians chapter four and verse 13 says that I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And the context of that verse is really amazing because Paul is talking about, he says, I can have a lot or I can have a little. Either way, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. And for us today, we can have life going along smoothly or we can be in the middle of a global pandemic, but we can do all things through Christ who gives us strength because we know that God never leaves us. He never forsakes us, that our mighty God is still with us. And so I want to encourage you, if you're having fear and anxiety slip in, like maybe at moments you're okay and then you hear a new stat or you read a new story and fear and anxiety just is coming at you. Just, I wanna remind you that you can do all things through Christ who gives you strength, that all of us, God has not left us, that he's with us, he's in control and he is in charge. And so today we're kicking off a brand new series called Chasing Carrots, The Endless Pursuit of More. And each week we're going to look at a different carrot, a different thing that we chase after, that we look for. Because so many of us have believed a lie that uh, if we just could get a little bit more, then life would be better. Then I'd be satisfied. Then I'd have security. Then I'd have comfort. Then things would go the way that I had hoped, I'd always wanted. If I could just get a little more. But here's the big idea for the series. There's a guy by the name of Blaise Pascal, and he has this quote where he said that God has placed inside each of us a God-shaped vacuum that can only be filled by our crea not, by nothing created, but only by our creator, God, who we know through Jesus Christ. So, so many of us, what we try to do is we take these created things and we try to fill a spiritual need. So we take perfection and we try to make sure everything lines up and everything works and everything's perfect. And we try to fill this spiritual need. We take money and stuff and we try to fill this spiritual need. We take comfort 
comfort. We try to fill this spiritual need. We take our spouse and this, the relationship we have, and we try to fill a spiritual need. We try to fill this vacuum and this void, but none of these things can go, can, they can't, can't fulfill their promise. They can't come through on the promise of giving us the full life that Jesus promised. In John 10, 10, he said, the thief has come only to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I have come that you might have life and have it to the full. And so the way to full life, even in the midst of a difficult season that we're in right now, the way to full life is through following Jesus. And so there's a guy by the name of Marcus Person. He's actually the creator of Minecraft. And he sold his company for $2.5 billion. You heard that right, $2.5 billion. And uh, he, he became one of the greatest entrepreneurs of our generation. He went on to buy a $70 million mansion and he was traveling and partying with people. And then he wrote this on Twitter. He said, the problem with getting everything is you run out of reasons to keep trying, hanging out with a bunch of friends and partying with famous people, able to do whatever I want. I have never felt more isolated. So here's the, here's, here's the deal. More is a mirage. This idea that if I only had a little bit more, then it would fulfill me. It's a mirage that we would keep on chasing. We would keep on going. And so we're encouraging everyone to get off the treadmill. In this series, we're saying, let's get off the treadmill where we're chasing after all of these things. And in this season, when we're socially distanced and when so many things are shut down and there's maybe less demands on our time, what if something good were to come out of this and we were to slow life down, we were to enjoy our family and through scripture and prayer, through the word of God, our, our heart would turn towards God and our hunger and our desire would be to follow Jesus. And maybe our desire for these other things would grow dim. It would fade as we follow hard after Jesus, after we seek hard after Jesus. And so today we're talking about the pursuit of fame or the pursuit of people's approval, this carrot of wanting to be liked and wanting to be respected, wanting to be known, wanting to be approved by everyone. And so maybe you're thinking, ah, this will be an easy one for me. I'm not really trying to get famous, but I think this shows up in our life in different ways as we want people's approval. So sometimes it shows up by being overly committed. So we're saying, I'm not trying to please everybody, but I do say yes every time anyone asks me to do anything because I wouldn't want to disappoint them, right? Or sometimes it shows up with uh, wanting credit. So we don't like really working in the backgrounds or we have a hard time if somebody's not going to give us the credit for what we accomplish. Other times it shows up in being it's hard for us to take criticism. A hundred people could tell us we did a great job. As soon as one person says it wasn't so good, we fall apart. We're chasing after approval. We're chasing after fame. And again, maybe you're thinking this isn't a big one for you. I want to say today that maybe for your grandkids or your kids, there's studies that show that kids that are from the ages of 10 to 12, their greatest desire I could, I'll tell you what it's not. The greatest desire is not to be rich. It's not for friends and community. It's, it's not success. It's actually to be famous. The studies are showing that being widely known, being famous, they're dreaming of being a YouTuber. They're dreaming of being an influencer, that it's one of the greatest desires in their heart is to be famous. And I want to take a moment and just say, it's not actually wrong to be famous. There are people who are the best in their field, and they've become well-known for it. There are people who are talented, and it's, it's given them a stage. And, you, you know, the Bible says about David that God gave him fame, that he increased his fame. About Solomon, God gave him riches and fame. Jesus would have certainly, there's an argument to be made that he was famous when he was on the earth, but he's certainly famous today. And I don't know, you probably don't know this about me, but I'm kind of a big deal. Not for preaching or doing any of this kind of stuff, but once when I was in grade six, I went on the, uh, an exchange to Montreal and they wanted, some, they wanted some of the students of the exchange. So I went and lived in Montreal for two weeks with a family and then their son came and lived for two weeks in Sarnia at my, in, my, in my family home. But they wanted somebody to go on the local news, one of the students, and they needed somebody who could speak decent French. But a lot of the students were just in like the core French program and I was in French immersion. So they, so you're looking at someone who once 
was on a local news station in Montreal. So, you know, fame, it's not in and of itself bad. There's, that it's not the fame that is the problem. But today, the warning is about the pursuit of it. It's the pursuit of fame. It's the pursuit of approval. With all of these carrots, many of them, the carrot itself is, there's nothing wrong with it, but it's the pursuit of it. It's when it becomes all that we want. It becomes, when it becomes the number one thing that we're looking for. Because what happens is it changes the trajectory. It changes the direction that our heart is pointing. We're no longer pointing our heart towards God. We're no longer pointing our heart towards Jesus and towards others, but it, everything becomes inward. It becomes about us. It becomes about what is going on in our life. And it becomes about our fame, our approval. The, the direction changes. I remember when I was taking uh, driver's ed, one of the things they taught us was the eyes lead the car. So I don't know if you've ever done this, but you've been driving along, you're driving, and then you're like, hey, that house is for sale. But in that motion of kind of looking to see the, the for sale sign, and you end up on the, on the shoulder of the road, right? And then you find yourself correcting and trying not to overcorrect and get back on the road because eyes lead the car. And in the same way, the things that we're chasing after, the, the, our desires of our hearts, they point the direction of our life. They help us make our decisions. And so we want these number one things, the things that we want. We want it to be to love God and to love others. We don't want it to be looking for the approval of other people or somehow being widely known or famous, but we want our heart's desire. We want the direction of our heart to be pointed towards God. I want to read this quote from Erwin McManus, and uh, this quote is so good, it's worth tuning in today just to hear this quote. But he says, fame's great illusion is that you are known by the masses. Fame's great danger is to be known by no one. We don't need a crowd, we need a tribe. We need to know that in the eyes of those that matter, we are fully seen. Isn't that good? We don't need a crowd, we need a tribe. We don't need to be loved and liked and approved of by everybody, but we do need a tribe that we're running with. We do need somebody that we're checking in on and they're checking in on us, that we're sharpening one another. And so here's an encouragement for you. During this time of being socially distanced, what if we revived the phone call, right? Like so often now we're sending emails or text messages. What if we revived the phone call? We picked up the phone, we called somebody, and we just checked in and saw how they were doing. Because we don't need to be loved and approved by everybody, but we do need a tribe. We do need people that we're running with. And one of the things I think is the key in this whole series, um, whatever care it is that we're talking about, is we need to change the why that we're pursuing something. Because again, approval in and of itself is not a terrible thing. To be well-liked is not a bad thing. It gives us opportunity to share the love of Jesus because we're accepted ahead of time. But the why that we're pursuing it, whatever carrot it is, maybe it's in, itself, in, its, in and of itself not wrong, but what's the reason? What's the why behind it? So Matthew chapter 20, verse 28 says, For even the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve others and to give his life as a ransom for many. So Jesus was not only the greatest man who ever lived, but he was the greatest servant who ever lived. And we can be great. We can live a great life. We can live in greatness if we follow in the way of Jesus, if we become a servant as well. Whenever I think about this idea of putting someone ahead of yourself, I often think about John the Baptist. John the Baptist was Jesus' cousin, and uh, he was preparing the way for Jesus. And he was kind of like a crazy prophet. He was out in the wilderness and he was eating locusts and honey and he was dressed in animal skins. And, but he was so interesting to the crowds that people came to see him. They came, they gathered around him and he would teach them that they should repent of their sins, that they should follow in the kingdom of God. And he would tell them about someone who was coming, someone who was coming after him that was he wasn't even worthy to tie the, his, his sandals, that this person who's coming is so great. But after a while, the crowds are so interested by John that they're thinking, maybe John, they're saying, John, are you the one? Is, is, it, is it not that there's someone else coming, but are you the one? And John, in John chapter three, in verse 30, he says, he must become greater and greater. I must become less and less. So John the Baptist takes the spotlight and he points it squarely 
on Jesus. And so I'm encouraging you, how can we point the spotlight on Jesus during this time that we, you know, there's, there's so much unknown, there's so much unrest, there's so much uncertainty. How can we shine the spotlight on Jesus for our neighbors? You know, could we buy our neighbors some groceries and drop it on their front porch and then run away? Could we, you know, is there a way that we could again pick up the phone and call and check in on somebody? Could we shine the spotlight on Jesus in this season? So I was thinking about this idea of fame and thinking about pride and people's approval and, and shining the spotlight on Jesus. And I thought about Isaiah chapter 14, and there's this, this really interesting passage about Lucifer. He was an angel. He was um, in the throne room of God. And we know him as our enemy, Satan. And in Isaiah chapter 14, he makes five I will statements. He says, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the mountain of the congregation. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Lucifer, one of God's angels, what, what caused his downfall was pride. It was seeking approval. It was seeking fame that he was tired of God being the one who was the most high. And he wanted to sit and be the most high as well. He wanted the spotlight on him. Doesn't it make it seem worse this pursuit of fame, this pursuit of approval, if that's the thing that brought Lucifer down. So we want to be sure that we're not pointing the spotlight on us, but we're pointing the spotlight on Jesus. Maybe in this season, while again, we're socially distanced, we could come to a place where other people's approval wasn't so important to us. We're not even seeing people as much. And, you know, we're kind of, there's more separation. And what if we came to a place during this season where God's approval mattered the most? where it actually mattered for us most to be known by God and then to let other people know that they are also known by God, that we could operate, we could live out of an approval that comes from God, not approval of other people, not fame or fortune, but that we would be approved by God and we would live out of that confidence. Erwin McManus, he said that we should seek not to be known, but to be worth knowing. And how much more could you be worth knowing if you become like Jesus, right? If we become more and more like Jesus, we become more and more worth knowing. And we want to live for God. We want to live for God alone, for his will, for his glory, for his purpose. Galatians chapter 1 and verse 10 says, Obviously, I'm not trying to win the approval of people, but of God. If pleasing people were my goal, I would not be Christ's servant. I would not be Christ's servant. This endless pursuit of more. It's, it's really more of a spiritual problem than it is a relational problem or a financial problem or any other kind of problem. It's a spiritual problem because it's, it's like, it's about idolatry, right? It's about putting something first that's not God. And so it's a spiritual problem. And so there's this spiritual void that we're trying to, this infinite void, this infinite vacuum, and we're trying to fill it with a finite solution. And we need to seek God. We need then to ask God to fill and to satisfy and to give us this life that is more abundantly. God's approval sets us free, right? If we could find approval in God, if we could live out that approval, it sets us free from trying to please other people, from chasing all these other things. It gives us freedom. I love the way that Paul says it in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 4. He says, for we speak as messengers approved by God to be entrusted with the good news. Our purpose is to please God, not people. He alone examines the motives of our hearts. Think about how freeing this is, that our purpose is to please God, not to please other people. Can I just, you know, set you free a bit today that our purpose is to please God. It's not to please other people because we all know it's impossible to please everybody. You please this group of people and this group of people's mad at you. You do the thing that this people, these people want you to do and now they've changed their mind and they don't want that anymore. It's impossible to please everyone, but we can please God. Not because of what we've done, but because of what Jesus has done. Because Jesus came, he lived a perfect life and he died and he rose again. We're forgiven. We're chosen. We're free. And out of that approval, we can follow hard after God. We can live for Jesus and we can please God. He can be so pleased with us. He'll, he'll say to us one day, well done, 
good and faithful servant. I think somebody needs to hear this today, that Jesus, Jesus notices. You know, when you serve and serve and you give and give and it seems to go unnoticed, Jesus notices. Someday he's gonna say, that cup of cold water that you gave in my, in my name, I saw it. That when you went and visited that person, I saw it. What you did for the least of these, I saw it. And maybe it wasn't applauded on earth, but it was applauded in heaven. He sees and he knows you and you are known and you are loved by God with this never stopping, never giving up, always and forever love. He loves you. And the world may not know your name, but we know a name. We know the name of Jesus, the name that is above every name, that at that name, that at one day every knee is going to bow, that he's the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And you know, our name is written in his book. And no matter what other people might call us, he calls us more than a conqueror. He calls us blessed and loved and chosen. And suddenly we realize that we're not living for the approval of other people, but we're living for God's approval. And we take this posture of less of me and more of God. In this season, when we're trying to figure it out, we want to take the posture of less of me and more of God, that he must become greater and greater. I must become less and less, that we would shine the spotlight on Jesus. In just a moment, I'm going to pray. But you've, you're here today and you're maybe a follower of Jesus and you're, you're listening in and you're saying, man, I love Jesus. But I think I feel that temptation to, to uh, wanna be known, to wanna be famous, to wanna be seen, to wanna be approved and respected. And I feel that temptation. You're saying, would you pray for me? Because I feel that temptation, but it's my heart's cry. It's my desire that, there, that Jesus would become greater and greater, that I would become less unless there'd be other people here and maybe you've never even been to Calvary and you're, you've kind of stumbled across this today or maybe you've been a number of times but you're feeling today like it's time to return to Jesus. You're saying, I've been searching my whole life. My whole life I've been trying to fill that void. I've been trying to fill that vacuum. There's been addiction. There's been relationships. There's been vacations. There's been new homes. There's been new jobs but I've been trying to fill that vacuum and today I wanna to say to you that the search is over that this is the answer, that Jesus is the one who can bring that full and abundant life. He can bring that satisfaction. He can fill you to overflowing with the love of God. And then as you experience the love of God and you experience God's approval, you'll say freely I've received now, freely I wanna give it away. I wanna love God and I wanna love others. I wanna give it away. I wanna see people move and, and change and everything made brand new in their life. And so we're going to pray. So why don't we, why don't we pray for both of those groups of people? God, I pray that your Holy Spirit would shine your light on our hearts today. That your approval would be all that really matters to us. And everything we do and everything we say everywhere we go, God, that uh, we would live out of being approved by you. That we would live to be known by you and to make you known to others. And Jesus, today I pray for those who are far from you. Um, maybe they're returning to you or never ever experienced life with you. God, we've all made mistakes. And so today we're saying, would you forgive us of our sins? Would you make each of us brand new? Today we're asking Jesus, would you save people? Would you change us? Would you fill us with your spirit so that we can live for you and follow you? We're saying, let there be less of us and more of you, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for new life. And so we pray for each person in need of new life. And we're praying for those that are feeling fear and anxiety, God. And they're asking that you would just be with them today. They're saying, God, would you, would you speak to me? Would you comfort me? Would you give me peace? And Lord, we're praying today, you would bring peace that doesn't make sense. Peace that surpasses our understanding to each of us. Amen. Amen. Well, I would encourage you to reach out if you gave your life to Jesus today, or if you have a prayer request, you can put that in the comments below. But I want to remind you that uh, there has never been a moment throughout history, throughout your life, throughout the 
the, the global history and in the world today, there's never a moment when our good and loving God is not sitting on the throne, ruling and reigning and in control. And I believe that you can trust him and that we can live out of a place of being known, loved and approved by God. We're praying for you and believing that God will now, as, he, as you're filled with his love, that you'll freely give his love away. Thank you, Pastor Tom, for such an amazing message. Um, we're going to be uh, doing the same thing again next week, so make sure you tune in for that. Hey, you know what? What a better way for us to kind of know what, what this looked like than for you to take a picture with your watch party. Whoever it is that you're sitting in your living room or around your table watching this with, would you, we don't care if you're in your pajamas. That's okay. Um, but just take a picture, post it up on your Facebook, on your Instagram, tag us in it. We would love to see um, what your watch party for Calvary service looks like. Uh, we're so excited about what God is going to do through this once again. Um, would you like this video? Would you share it? Can we share hope in the midst of this season? And uh, and so next next week we'll be we'll be back doing the same thing. We'll see you soon.